What's up guys? So a few weeks ago I posted this custom lettering piece on Instagram using this kind of paper cutout effect, which I thought turned out to be pretty cool. And a few people asked me how I made it, so I figured I'd just make this tutorial to show you guys how to replicate this effect and maybe apply it to your own custom lettering work and make it stand out a little bit more. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna start by creating a new Photoshop document, which we're gonna make 3000 by 3000 pixels, which is a bit large, but I usually prefer to go a bit larger and then eventually scale it down if we need to. And for the resolution, we can leave it at 72 pixels per inch since we're only gonna use this digitally. And for the color mode, we're gonna change it from CMYK to uh, RGB and press okay. Now we want to create a background and there's a few different ways you could do this. You could either apply colors or textures to your background layer, but what I prefer to do is usually create a shape and then apply textures and colors to that shape. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool over here and create a square by holding down shift and dragging down. Now that we have our shape, we want to apply a color to that shape. So the way to do this is by double clicking right here in the uh, the image of the layer. And you want to put in a value, so you could either put in an RGB value, but I'm going to be putting in a hex, which is 73C0C8, which gives us this light blue, which is going to match pretty well with the, uh, the soft pink that we're going to apply to our lettering later on. Now that we have our color, we want to add some texture to that color. And there's, again, a few different ways to do this. And the way I'm gonna do this is by applying a uh, pattern overlay to this layer. Now I'm gonna add a download link to the description of this video so you guys can download the same pattern that I'm using. And once you've downloaded this pattern, all you have to do is double click on it and it'll automatically add it to your patterns library in Photoshop. Now let's go back in Photoshop and click right here on the layer style icon and select pattern overlay. Now to start with, we're greeted with this kind of bubble pattern, which is obviously not what we're going for. So we're just going to click right in here and select that last pattern to the right, which is the one we just installed. Now, as you can see, we have this kind of paper pattern applied to our background. Now we're going to change the blend mode from normal to linear burn and change the opacity down to 30%. Now that we're done, we could go to the left panel and select creating an overlay. We're gonna change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And take down the opacity to 25%. Now for the angle, we're gonna change it to 65% and press okay. Now, as you can see, we have this nice texture applied to our background and we have a light source coming from the upper right corner. Now you can either use the type tool in Photoshop and type in your custom text or use a previously vectorized piece that you've done in Illustrator, which I'm going to do right now. So for this one, I'm going to use my logo. So I'm going to go ahead and open it in Illustrator. Now you can't see it because it's white on white, but I'm going to go ahead and press Command A to select all and select my logo. Next, I want to apply a color to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click in the fill color right here to bring up the color picker. And again, I'm gonna add in the hex value. Now I'm gonna copy my logo by pressing Command C or Control C and go back to Photoshop and paste it in there by pressing Command V. Now, once you paste your object, make sure you leave it selected as smart object. That way it's gonna stay vectorized and you can scale it up and down without losing resolution. Now I'm just going to scale it up by holding shift so it constrains the proportions. And I'll just nudge it up a little bit by pressing the up arrow a few times. Now that we have our logo and our background, we can go ahead and create layer groups just to keep everything nice and tidy. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my background layer and press command G, which is going to create a layer group. And I'm going to call this layer group background, but you can call this whatever you want. And next I'll do the same thing with the lettering layer. I'm gonna call this one lettering. And I'll also rename this layer lettering. Next, we're gonna go down here on layer styles and select bevel and emboss. 
For this style, we're going to leave it at inner bevel. Now you want to change the size to 250 pixels. And the softened value will be 16 pixels. Now for the shading, you want to uncheck global light and add a minus 145 degree angle. We'll leave the altitude at 30 degrees. For the highlight mode, you want to change it to overlay and leave the color at white and change the opacity to 15%. Now for the shadow mode, we're going to change it from multiply to linear burn. And what we want to do for the color is essentially have a darker tone of the background. So we're going to go ahead with the color picker and pick the same blue we used for the background and then just select a darker shade and click OK. And then for the opacity, we're going to take it down to 10%. Next, we're going to click on inner shadow and change the blend mode from multiply to normal. Then we're going to change the color all the way to white and take the opacity down to 20%. For the angle, again, we're going to uncheck use global light and set the value to minus 145 degrees. For the distance, we'll set it to one pixel, zero pixel for the choke, and one pixel for the size. And then we're going to want to add a little bit of noise to add to the gritty effect of the uh, paper texture, so we'll add 5% noise. Next, we'll click on Pattern Overlay. And again, we're going to select the paper texture that we installed previously, and change the blend mode to Linear Burn. We're going to take down the opacity to 50% and go select Drop Shadow. Now we're going to change the blend mode from Multiply to Screen and change the color to white. Again, we're going to uncheck Use Global Light and set the angle to minus 145 degrees. Again, we'll set the distance to 1, the spread to 0, and the size to 1. and add 5% noise, then click OK. Now, as you can see, we've applied this same paper texture to our text, and we've added a very subtle bevel. Next, what we want to do is we're going to add some light reflection. Since we have a light source coming from the upper right corner, we're going to want to add some reflection to the upper right edges of our text right here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to duplicate this lettering layer by holding down Alt and sliding the layer up, just like this. And now we're going to discard these effects since we're going to add new ones. Now again, to keep everything clean, we're just going to create a new layer group by pressing Command G. And we'll name this one Text Effect. Then we'll set the fill to 0%. Next, we're going to click on the layer style icon and select blending options. And then make sure you uncheck the blend clip layer as group. Then we're going to select bevel and emboss and change the style from inner bevel to outer bevel. Then we're going to change the size to 50 pixels and the soften value to 16 pixels. Again, we're going to uncheck global light, and this time we'll make the angle 55 degrees. We'll set the altitude to zero, and then change the highlight mode from screen to overlay. Leave it at white, and take the opacity down to 45%. For shadow mode, we'll take it down all the way to zero. Next, we're going to select inner shadow, and change the blend mode to overlay. And we're going to change the color to white. And again, uncheck use global light and set the angle to minus 145 degrees. Again, we'll set the distance to one, the choke to zero and the size to one. And we'll add a 5% noise. Then select drop shadow and change the blend mode to overlay and make it white. 
Again, uncheck Use Global Light and set the angle to minus 145 degrees. Then for the distance, we'll set it to 100 pixels, zero for the spread, and again 100 pixels for the size. Now everything's way too bright, so we're gonna set the opacity down to 15, 16%. Now, as you can see, we've added some light reflection to the upper right edges of our logo, as if the paper was kind of flipping up like it would normally do if it was cut through. So now that we have our lighting, we're still missing a lot of depth, especially between both sheets of paper to kind of give them distance. So we're gonna go ahead and apply some shadows. To do that, we're just gonna duplicate this lettering layer, again, by keeping Alt pressed and dragging it up. And again, we'll discard the effect since we're going to apply new ones. Next, we're going to click on the layer style icon and select bevel and emboss. Again, let's change the style to outer bevel. We're going to change the size from 13 to 38 pixels. And we'll leave soften to zero. Once again, we'll uncheck the use global light checkbox set the angle to minus 145 degrees and we'll leave the altitude to 30 degrees. For the highlight mode, we're going to bring down the opacity all the way to zero. And for the shadow mode, we'll leave it at multiply in black and take the opacity down to 25%. Now what we want to do is apply the shadow to the interior of our lettering. To do this, we'll just select this layer and nudge it one pixel down and one pixel left by pressing the down arrow and the left arrow. Then we can select this layer and apply it to the underneath layer. And the way to do that is by keeping Alt pressed and then placing your cursor right between both layers. When your cursor changes, you can click, which will then apply the upper layer's effect to the underneath one. Now, as you can see, we have this very thin and precise shadow separating both sheets of paper. Now the shadow is looking a little bit too precise. So what we're gonna do is go up here to Filter, then select Blur and Gaussian Blur. Next, change the radius to one pixel. Click OK. Now, as you can see, the shadow is a bit more diffused and looks more natural. Now this shadow is still way too subtle. So what we wanna do is increase the opacity and the radius of the shadow by gradually duplicating that layer. So once again, we're going to duplicate this layer by keeping Alt press and dragging it up. And again, apply it to the underneath layer. Now, as you can see, we just doubled the intensity of the shadow. Now we'll click right here on the filter effect to bring up the Gaussian blur menu. And we'll change the radius to six pixels. Now let's repeat the same process, duplicate this layer, apply it to the underneath layer, and double click on Gaussian Blur, and change the value to 8 pixels. Once again, duplicate the layer. We're going to change the value to 10 pixels. Let's duplicate it again. and this time we'll double it and make it 20 pixels. And one last time. And this time we'll make it 30 pixels. Then we're just gonna go down to layer styles and select satin. Now let's change the blend mode from multiply to soft light and change the color to white. Let's take the opacity down to 20% and change the angle to 45 degrees. Now for these values, we're gonna set the distance to 90 pixel and again, the size 90 pixels. Now let's change the contour to the first one to the left and check the anti-alias box and click OK. Now, as you can see, we're starting to have a pretty nice paper cutout effect. 
but I feel like it's still missing a little bit of depth, so we're going to apply some shadows to the exterior of our logo. Now let's close this group. And then we're going to create a new layer. And make sure to place it right underneath this one. Now we want to select the shape of our logo by keeping Command Press and clicking right in the image of the layer. As you can see, our whole logo is now selected. Next, we're going to click on the layer we just created and apply a color to our selection. To do this, we're going to press Shift and Delete to bring up the Fill menu. Now over here, we're going to select Color. And then once again, what we want to do is select a darker shade of our background color. So I'm going to go with this dark blue and make it a little bit more blue. Now we can deselect our shape by pressing Command D. Now we're just going to nudge the layer we just created by pressing down and left on the arrows of your keyboard. Now let's repeat this a few times until we have a good distance. Then go ahead and right click on the layer and select Convert to Smart Object. And then let's go to Filter, go to Blur and select Gaussian Blur and change the radius from 30 to 10 pixels. All right, now our shadow is still a bit too intense, so we're gonna go to the opacity value and take it down to 25%. And finally, change the blending mode from normal to multiply. And that's it guys, we got our paper cutout text effect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you plan on using this effect on some of your work, make sure to let me know on Instagram. I leave a link in the description and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.